we are going to move on and talk about the other team in New York because Anthony, the, the Islanders slim playoff hopes they're, they're just, they're hanging by a thread. I put up the number tragic number because I think yeah. it's five. If Washington gets five points, it's over. Yeah. Um, and Pittsburgh gets three. So, but speaking about that, the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Islanders defeated them in a shutout last night. Josh Bailey and yeah. Zach Parise scored twice. Yeah. I, I was, I mean, that's like lightning striking. First off, it should be a good encouragement, Zach Parise, for next season. He's under extension. 13, 13 goals for Zach Parise. You know what? At 37 years old for league minimum, you take that and run. You know, I, I said before the beginning of the year, 15 goals for Parise um, should be the expectation. And despite his really slow start where it didn't look like he was going to be able to reach that, um, 13, he, he probably will finish more than 15. He might get like, you know, 17. Um, but whatever it is. Uh, he's been, he's been great. So I've, I have no issues with Zach Parise. Yeah. And you know, something, if it, it's just the honors got to get him on a lower line and then it's a home run next year. That's all they got to do. But by the way, that's also going to be a discussion in the bar talk as well. Uh, but as you watch through those highlights and, and through that game, give me your thoughts on that save Ilya Sorokin made on on Jake Gensel. He had another one earlier in the game in the second yeah. period. Too, uh, I mean, that that saved the game. Um, you know, what, what was impressive about that was that deflection from Gensel came so close to him, so in tight. Um, so he didn't have he didn't have much reaction time to get the glove up there. But um, yeah, that, that was that was an incredible slave, uh, incredible save. Um, you know, he's he's made He's made numerous of, of them throughout the season. Um, you know, he's, you know, a lot of a lot of people compare Shesterkin and Sorokin. Um, Shesterkin is definitely better positionally, but Sorokin has drawn comparisons to Hasek from his athleticism for a reason. His reaction times are are just are just incredible, and he 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 just reacted real quick and flashed the glove. But yeah, that was that was a huge save. That was an incredible save, and it ended up sealing the game for them. By the way, thank you, New York Islanders, for from the New York Rangers because they kept Pittsburgh back one point. Yeah, and um, that the, the first off, by the way, what's the bigger news? That save for the fact that the Islanders got a shootout goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's yeah. it's, oh, it's sure. not many things. But Anthony, by the way, uh, I was talking to you about this before we went on, and I have a friend of mine. Huge, huge Rangers fan, but sometimes he's not so informed. And um, and he said Ilya Sorokin couldn't start for half the teams in the league. I'm going to reverse this question for you. How many teams would jettison their go their current goalie right now uh, for Ilya Sorokin? And by the way, Ranger fans, don't worry, we're not one of them. I mean this this friend you're talking about. Um, he's the clear definition of a of a homer. Um, yes. And clearly that just shows he doesn't know much about any teams outside of the Rangers, really. Um, but no, Ilya Sorokin is elite, plain and simple. Um, for my money, um, this season, he's been the second best goalie in the NHL, bar none, behind his good friend Igor. Um, and now, if you, in a fantasy world, because you have to, if you take out of into consideration contract, you know, because obviously, hypothetically, certain teams wouldn't even be able to move their goalie for him if they wanted to. But if you take out contracts and such a, and such a side, um, I mean, I think it was 32 teams in the league. I would say at least 28 of them would probably get rid of their starting goalie for Ilya Sorokin. Um, yeah, I think it's gun, easier gun, to list the teams that wouldn't. And gun gun to my head right now, like the only uh, the obvious answer is is just Sturkin. They have the Rangers have no reason to make that move. Um, other than that, I mean Freddie Anderson. I mean the guy's having a good year. He's a good goalie, but you know, I mean he's he's an older guy. There's no, so yeah. There's really no. Uh, Igor Vasilevsky. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Va Vasilevsky. Yeah, good one. Vasilevsky. Because you know what's funny about Vasilevsky is. Um, He's not in the upper echelon of statistics this year, but for my money, he's still the big time money goalie. If you want in the game, 
I mean, Christ, look at last playoffs. Every every win the Lightning had to close out a series, the guy had a shutout. So um, you know, his he, last five series wins are shutouts. Yeah. So he he's still you know he's still one of the best. So yeah, I mean Tampa, the Rangers, not many other. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, Ilya, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble trying to think of other ones. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's no. like you're talking about 29 teams that would get rid of their goalies. I mean, the guy the guy is second in save percentage, fourth in GAA, six in shutouts, um, and he's he's lost three shutouts within. The final two minutes of a game, he lost one. Thirty seconds left in Chicago. Um, he got the other night in Carolina. He lost one with fifty-eight seconds left. There are a couple others where he lost it within the last two minutes of the game. The guy could easily have nine or ten shutouts. Um, and again, if if you look at his body of work and what he's done, Great equipment, Bassey. this season compared to all the goalies around him are on great playoff teams. He's on a team that's fifteen points out of a playoff spot. And he still is where he is right now in those statistical categories. I mean, come on. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great hockey content and an entertaining interactive podcast. So check us out and our library of videos. Anthony, I got Chris Frost's question right here for you. If the Islanders did pull off the miracle, do you start Vassy? Oh, sorry, Varley uh, against, yeah, the, it's not against the Rangers. Rangers. They had their chance this week and they kind of blew it. But um, in this fantasy world, uh, I mean, I know Varley's been good against the Rangers, but Sor- I mean, look at the game Sorokin played against the Rangers last. Where he made that incredible stick save, and um, you know he played really, really well. But I-, I would say no. I mean, you would. I think you would still. You would have to go Sorokin, but knowing Trotz, he loves his veterans, so maybe he would go Varlamov. But uh, it's 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 Sorokin's net from now on. That's that's the easiest way to say it. And no we had that similar conversation years ago. Henrik Lundqvist versus Team X, where it was yeah. oh if, oh do you do you start Henrik versus this team? Mm-hmm. No, you, you obviously start Henrik. Yeah. He's the good one. He had he had uh, uh, there was a great comment earlier in here about uh, Henrik always had trouble against the Canadians. You know he beaten who he beat in the Canadians or sorry. Do you know he beat twice in the playoffs the Montreal Canadiens yeah. and one time Carey Price is totally healthy. Mm-hmm. And don't get me started on Dimitri Amel and Trip and Chris Kreider. So and you know I'm glad. Uh, I'm, I sent you that tweet earlier. I'm glad that Dave Panyota sent out that tweet today, just talking about where Sorokin is in the you know statistical categories for goalies because um, guys just you know he's not. He's not getting the love that he, that frankly, that he deserves in terms of, you know, being talked about was one of the Vesna finalists. Um, and I know the Vesna trophy voting, I don't know if you know, it's a little different. It's actually voted, it's not by writers. The Vesna is, is picked by GMs. Um, mm-hmm. And it, I, I'm, listen, I know I'm an Islander fan and I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty non partial. I, I, I say it how it is, but I don't know how you, how you look at it. And seeing that he has better statistics than some of these guys that are on playoff teams, and he's on a bad team, and yet he's performing, he's performing a lot better. I mean, for me, well, that's where you, that's where you weight me, it a little bit more. For, for me, that's a no-brainer. I mean, the the guy is a Vesna finalist, but we'll see how it shakes out. But um, like yeah. that, that kind of reminds me of 1994, John Van Beesbrook, who was nominated for the Hart Trophy on a or sorry, a finalist. I always say nominated, but he was a finalist for the Hart Trophy. And the Panthers didn't make the playoffs, but they were within shouting distance for yeah. an expansion team. That was yep. something that was unheard of. And and look, we'll use the term that we're still fans. I'm not going to hide any of my stuff that's right behind me. <laughs> but the truth is, we're also pundits, too. We could be a little bit more impartial. I mean, we carry our hearts on our sleeves, but our opinions are on the other sleeve, too. Yeah. So, Anthony, I just got to run off two more questions uh, just about the Islanders, and then we're going to go over to the bar talk. Josh Bailey had two goals last night. What's his future with the New York Islanders? Uh, very polarizing player on Islander boards. Um, he gets he gets a lot of hate that, frankly, is a little too far. Um, you know, 30, 35 points um, for a guy that makes $5 million a year um, but is actually owed only $3 million in, in real dollars. Um, that's really not bad. And I know some people, Islander fans, say, oh, it'll take a lot for Lou to move him, but um, – he moved the corpse of Vlad, who was a far uh, worse player than Bailey, and, and still did it. So um, I think Josh Bailey, um, 
will be shopped in the off season. And there are a lot of teams like Ottawa, Buffalo, Arizona, who are going to need to reach the cap floor um, that will gladly take his contract. And yeah, they're not going to get anything really back. They'll probably get a, a, but even if they got a third round pick, it accomplishes what the Islanders need. It, it's just accrue even more cap space. So um, I, uh, yeah, so that's Bailey. That's what I think of Bailey. I think he's a prime candidate to be uh, to be moved in the off season. Even with the two years remaining on his deal, he's gonna they're gonna be able to get him moved, or is it gonna cost them something a little bit more, like like draft picks? Or I, I don't want to go as high as Anthony Beauvillier. No, that's not gonna. I mean, look, that's look not what that's I just cool. said. Andrew Ladd could barely play hockey anymore, and Lou got rid of him with years left on his contract, and didn't give a first, didn't give a top prospect. So Josh Bailey is a significant better player. So, right. and again, teams need to reach the cap floor. So, no, Bailey won't cost a sweetener to get rid of. Again, he's not going to – he may only get a third, fourth-round pick in return. But for the Islanders, it's the cap space is the issue. So that's no worry. All right, Anthony, I got to ask you this one last question because assuming, let's say, the Islanders lose and Pittsburgh and Washington win their next two games – then they're out. But why is it important for a team to be trying to make the playoffs in this situation and not tank? Anthony? Um, because it's, I think it sets a bad, a bad just mentality in the room for young guys. Um, you don't want to get in the bad habit develop bad habits from, you know, losing and going through the motions. Um, it's just not, it's just not a good look. Um, especially there are veterans in the room who are proud. Um, even though they're not playoff bound, they, they still play hard just for themselves and, you know, for their teammates next to them. Um, I think the whole notion of tanking is toxic, frankly. Um, so, and especially not from a Lou led team. I mean, he, he would never, mm-hmm. he would never allow such things. But in general, it's not it's not good. It's not good. Because yeah, fans, it, it's easier for a fan to say, why don't they just tank and try to go for Shane Wright? But you know what? This team was trying to go at Stanley Cup expectations this year. They need to they they need to still put the effort in that room and show that they're just as good because you're going to want to attract people with that uh, salary cap and free agents uh, uh, space that they have right now. And more on that in about a minute. So. Uh, hey guys, what do you think about the Islanders? Uh, th- holding on to their playoff hopes. Ilya Sorokin is the elite goaltender already. Throw it all down in the comments below and don't forget to like and share and subscribe. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs>